Okay. Well, uh, first off, thank you everybody for taking the time to come and uh, join us here and back into my shop today. Uh, I am Baron Alex Jeremy Robert. I am uh, from the Barony of Glimmere in the Kingdom of Ontier. And uh, this is yet another class on uh, a variety of woodworking topics, kind of aimed at getting people started and building projects to build your tool skills and your tool set at the same time. So uh, you're not racing out there and buying all of these tools that you're only going to need for very specific applications down the road or trying to, you know, going out and buying every tool you think you'll ever need. We're just going to cover the tools you need for a specific project and kind of build off of them. Um, we've done quite a few of them up until now. And this one is going to be a little bit of a departure from what we've done. Um, up until now, most of the stuff we've done is very historically based and has a, a pretty solid grounding in, uh, Usually the 14th century on, we've, we've been, gone backwards a little bit and done that as well, then some earlier stuff. But this isn't going to be a table, it's actually a folding table built from a single sheet of plywood. It is not necessarily a period design in any way. And there are a few things that you can do to kind of make it a little bit more medieval looking. Um, but the whole idea of this is to build something functional, something usable that's not going to stick out as badly as say a white plastic you know, folding table. Um, so it's, it's a little nicer and you can put your own personal touch on it. Um, I have been active in the SCA for a couple of decades now and I've been doing woodwork pretty much from the beginning. So I have done projects everywhere from, uh, I wanna say it was a 20 year known world handbook with the round table uh, plywood cutout that they did on that one, all the way up through, uh, you know, some pretty, close attempts at building period appropriate furniture in period styles and trying to actually recreate existing pieces. So this is a table that I actually have three of in my own camp. Um, we're actually slowly going away from it and going to a more period setup, but I've used them for years and have found them to be really great. And uh, a lot of people seem to really enjoy them. Um, this is not my own design. This design came to me from uh, Sir uh, Gernon, uh, uh, Gernon Valtor du Hafleur of House Hafleur in the barony of Blothenor. And to my understanding, it came to him from uh, Sir Michael Richard the Tall, who, who picked it up at a, a Penzik some years ago. So not my plan. I'm not sure exactly where it came from, but I'm going to go ahead and share it with you just like it was shared with me. So the first thing you're going to need for this particular project is a single sheet of plywood. You're going to need four hinges and some additional screws. The hinges that I usually use for it are, uh, they're a, a tapered strap hinge and they're kind of diamond shaped like that. This is a four inch hinge, meaning that it's four inches this way and four inches the other way. So it's eight inches overall. And this is a heavy duty hinge. If you go into most of your stores, you'll find them and they'll either be light duty or heavy duty. Usually, when I'm looking at them, the easiest way to tell is if you'll notice here, there is that black gasket in the uh, between the pieces of it, and it provides a little bit more rigidity. It keeps it from moving quite as much. And if you compare a light duty and a heavy duty hinge, this section here where the actual hinge mechanism is, which is termed the barrel, is thicker and beefier, so it can take more of a strain. These are not the kind of tables that you're going to want to have people dancing on or sitting on. There to put your food on, there to put your cooking gear on, there to eat at, do small crafts. They're a lightweight portable table. Um, so, but the hinges stand up a bit better. They resist being torqued a little bit better than the regular ones do. So I tend to go for the heavier duty ones. Um, as far as the plywood, the minimum thickness I would go on these tables is a half inch thick plywood. And my preference is to go thicker than that. Uh, I used to be able to find it as five eighths inch plywood going to the store the other day. I can't really find that. Usually you're looking at like a 20, 30 second is the thickness they give to you. Um, the piece I've got is actually a half inch piece of, uh, I wanna say it was birch plywood that I bought. It was what I had, what they had in the store. They're a little, little tight right now on supplies. So a four by eight sheet of plywood, four hinges, and then you'll need some screws. In this particular case, I'm going with number eight one inch screws since I've got a half inch plywood and where I'm going to be screwing in is going to be doubled up. 
So the big thing in here is when you buy your screws, you'll see them as a bunch of different numbers. You'll see number six, number eight, number 10. These are number eight, and that has to do with the thickness of the screw and the size of the head. If you can see here, when I put that screw in, it's pretty much flush with the top. A number six is smaller. So when I put that in there, it's a little bit more recessed down. It's not flush with the top and it's not as much material in there. It's not as, as meaty of a screw. So it's a little bit more likely to pull out. A number 10 will fit in here, but it's just a little bit proud, slightly raised above the surface of the hinge. For what we're doing here, it really doesn't matter a lot. Because if you notice, these do not close completely flat. So if your screw sticks up just a little bit, you're really, it's not gonna affect the way things are moving at all. Um, I just like the aesthetic of that flat and flush look. So, and again, you'll need screws for that. Each of these hinges takes six screws. You got four of them, so you need 24 screws. That is about it. 24 screws, four hinges, one sheet of plywood, and then of course, glue, stain, all the other things. Um, so with that note, let's start at the store. When you're going and looking for your plywood, there's a few things that you wanna look for. Uh, if you wanna pull up that first picture, when you're going, you can buy a variety of different kinds of plywood. You can buy underlayment, you can buy cabinet grade, you can buy marine grade, you can buy sanded, there's all kinds of stuff. But one of the things you're looking at, and you can see here is the finish of the plywood is, is kind of an important thing to think about. The actual uh, makeup of the plywood is a bunch of, for those who are not certain, You've got different layers of wood that are glued perpendicular to each other to make up the thickness of the plywood. The top and bottom, the faces that you'll actually see are usually really thin. They're especially on your, your higher end plywood like the, the hardwood stuff. So you gotta be really careful with that not to sand through it accidentally or to ding it up too much. Um, you wanna be real kind of cautious of that and fragile. So you want something that doesn't have a whole lot of of marks or blemishes to it. If you look at this picture, you can see there's that darker area there, which looks like it's uh, from a bark inclusion or possibly where a branch was connected. So you got a little bit of darkening. If you're going to stain your table when you're done and put a dark stain on it, it probably won't show up much at all. If you're going for a lighter color or an oiled finish, it might show up a bit, be a little bit of character, but you're not gonna be able to sand that out. So think about that when you're, you're buying your wood. The other thing you're looking at is when they make these sheets of plywood, they basically take a log and they stick it on a giant roller and they shave it down in thin sections, um, kind of like coring an apple. Um, and then you just work their way in. So you get this big long sheet and it unrolls like a, a roll of paper towels. The problem with that is, is if there are any blemishes or any marks, occasionally you'll get holes and tears. Let's not go to the next picture. So one thing you want to watch out for is this right here. So that is where a branch was attached to the tree. You can see there's a little bit of a darker area from the wood, but that white dot right in the middle is actually where they have filled that in with some form of a putty um, to, to close up that void and give a flat, smooth finish. Most of those, of those that I have found, that will not take a stain. Um, it some of them will actually form like more of a film on top and it'll cover over it but to my experience they don't take the stain very well they will always stand out a little bit so be really careful when you're picking your lumber that it's either only on a side that you're going to put on the bottom or that you're going to cut off or just be aware that that's going to be something that's going to mar your finish a little bit go ahead to the next slide the other thing to think about is here as you can see is chip out uh, the surface of the plywood veneer is a very thin surface. So when you're working with it, you want to kind of watch the boards when you buy it to make sure that they haven't been beat up too much and are chipping and tearing. But also when you work with it, you want to be careful to buy or to cut uh, carefully to avoid having lots of torn out finish as you're going. The there are a couple of ways to minimize that. One is to put down like blue painter's tape over your, where you're gonna cut and then cut through the blue painter's tape. That will help minimize it. You wanna make sure that when you're doing it, you're gonna pull the tape off 
parallel to the surface and pull it towards where you're cutting. That prevents anything that might have loosened up when you're cutting from being lifted off and pulled away. Um, and the type of saw you're using is also going to determine how you should make those cuts. Uh, if you are using a table saw, usually the good side of your face is going to be down because as that saw is going in, it's cutting into the wood and it's going through. And then it, as it comes out of the top side is when it's potentially pushing that grain up and causing that tear out or that splintering as it's going. If you're using a circular saw, then you're going to have the opposite. You're going to want to have your good side up and your, uh, your, your potentially damaged size down. So whatever side you're doing, the, the, the saw that you're using, you're going to want to have that tape on the opposite side to help minimize your tear out. Okay, go to your next there. I think we're at that point. Okay, uh, go ahead. We'll come back to this one in a bit. Go ahead and kill the slides for now. So starting out with this, first thing is, like I said, you got a four foot by eight foot sheet of plywood. And the, there are plans available for this. If you haven't seen them already, they will be made available. Um, and there's, it's pretty simple layout. The entirety of this really, project- Really quick, I'll, I'll add them to the blog post that will be attached to the YouTube video for this okay. class, just so that everybody knows. And I'll also, I'll add the plans to um, the Facebook event for the class. Perfect. Actually, if you could pull that one up. Absolutely. So this, uh, this project calls for pretty much all straight lines. There are some angles in there. Um, you'll do a little bit of sanding and round out some curves here and there. But for the basic project, as you can see here, it's all straight lines. You're going to start out with your sheet of plywood. And the very first thing you're going to want to do is, if you look in the upper left-hand corner there, you can see where there's a diagram of the whole sheet. And it's broken down. You're going to cut two pieces. It'll end up being your legs. You're going to cut one piece. It'll end up being your top. You're going to have two pieces that are going to go on to the bottom of the tabletop, and those will be your stiffeners. And then you're going to have one stretcher. And there will be some, some waste pieces that come out of that, and also as you cut out your legs. And those will be used in other places. But for the most part, you use probably 90% of that sheet of plywood to make the table. So there's not a lot of scrap left over. Um, when you're laying out, the very first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to lay your plywood down and you're going to want to measure out your legs. And the legs on this project are two foot, four inches from the ground, and they are two foot wide. Do you want, do you want me to stop sharing? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. I think everybody got it right now. So when you buy a sheet of plywood, it is a nominal dimension. They say it is four foot, eight inches. Sometimes it's a little bigger in some dimensions, depending on where you buy. Sometimes it's a little bit smaller. So when you're cutting, you want to check that. And one of the other things you want to be real careful of, and I can't stress this with enough, because it is a constant issue that I'm always personally dealing with, is don't confuse two foot four inches for 24 inches. Otherwise, your table is going to be just a wee bit shorter than you intended. So for my case, I ended up, when I cut mine, I ended up with two pieces. And those are my legs and that's what they're going to be. But my plywood was actually a little bit wider. So I ended up cutting it at my two foot four inches tall. And then I used my saw and I went in and I cut it at 24 inches. And then I cut, I had a little piece left over and was thrown away. It was about a quarter of an inch wide. Um, so cutting those and making sure they're the right size. And then I'm going to set those aside. And then I'm going to move back to the remaining large chunk. And from there, I'm going to split off my tabletop. And by the plans for this table, cutting off that two foot four will leave me with five foot eight left, and that'll be the length of the table. If you need a longer table or you need taller legs, you're going to have to go to a second sheet of plywood on this project, unless you're happy with those legs with the tabletop being shorter. You can shrink it down. You can play with the dimensions, the dimensions on it. There are some things that are critical uh, in relation to each other, and we will get to that here as we go along. But so I'm going to move my table up, my remaining piece of plywood. I'm going to cut my table top out, and that is going to be two foot six inches wide. So you got a five foot eight by two foot six table top. 
Mine are tiny bit wider than that. I don't want that expose that plywood edge to show as you're coming up to it. So I will usually use a strip of uh, hardwood, usually oak, and uh, I'll cut about a half inch by quarter inch strip and use that to go all the way around the edges so that it will, A, it protects the plywood. It's not getting banged around and beaten up and it's not gonna splinter as much, but B, it also hides that plywood edge. So it looks like a thicker, stiff top as opposed to a thinner piece of plywood. It also does add a little bit more rigidity to the table and give it a bit more strength. So I'll slice that off and then it's down. You're gonna cut three more pieces out of that. You're gonna cut three long pieces. One of them is going to be six inch by five foot two inches and that's going to be your stretcher that is going to go in between your legs in slots and that will keep your whole table upright keep your legs from closing in and it will also prevent it from shifting side to side um, it gives gives it more rigidity and strength that way your remaining piece you're going to cut out you're going to have two pieces that are five and a half inches by four foot eight and what you'll generally end up with is <coughs> just a long narrow strip of plywood left over that you use to hit your ceiling lights with. And that's just, it is usable later down the road if you need it, but it's pretty much one of the first pieces of scrap that you're gonna end up with. So from there you end up and you've now got a pile of uh, six pieces of wood. And the next step, And I'm gonna take my tabletop and I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna check it out. I'm gonna make sure that this is a side that I don't want. This is my downside. In my case, this is a side that it's got a couple of voids that have been filled in with, uh, with putty and I don't want those showing. So my better side is underneath. So I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna take my two five and a half inch wide pieces. These are the, uh, supports, they're the, the stiffeners. And with this, it doesn't particularly matter. These are the underside of your table. And more than likely, nobody is ever going to see these again unless they're flipping your table upside down and looking at it. So not a big deal. Um, now again, this is to set up with this design. There are reasons for these num the numbers here and for the way they go together. This particular table is set up so that as you're going, you're gonna glue these stiffeners to the bottom of the table. Uh, I also usually use a brad nailer and uh, I'll use some thin five eighths or three quarter inch depending on what I'm using brads. It just helps it stiffen it a little bit, gets it in there and it makes it easier to lock these things down while that glue is drying. Uh, you can clamp it, but you're looking at a five and a half inch wide piece that is set in three and a half inches from your edge. So most people, unless you have very specialized clamps, they're not gonna go in far enough on the edge. So what you're gonna end up needing to do is then you're gonna need some sacrificial wood. Uh, if you've got some plywood hanging around, you could use that. But personally, I tend to have pieces of two by material all over the place. So for something like this, I will cut maybe three or four pieces of two by four down to the same thickness as my, or the same width as my table, that um, two foot six inch. And I will use those as calls. And what I mean by that is I'm gonna then take and I'm going to glue my stretchers in place on both sides. And then I'm gonna take my piece of two by four and I'm gonna lay it down over top. And then I'm gonna take my clamp, which can now reach to the edges of those two by fours and clamp that down and that will help apply pressure over the entirety of the board and keep it to keep on down better. For this one here, you're looking at three and a half inches from the edge. So the easiest way I got for that is I'm just gonna grab my adjustable square here and I'm gonna go in and I'm just gonna push it up against the edge. It's at the edge so that my stringer is now, or stretcher is now hitting, my stiffener is now hitting there and I'll go down and I'll do the same on the other end. And I know now that it is parallel and even, and then I'm gonna move that. I now need it at six inches from the end. These numbers all correspond 
with the way this table is built and how everything goes together. So what will happen is once these are glued down, this is not only does it strengthen your tabletop, but it also gives a base for your legs to attach. So when you put them on, your legs will actually come over here and the legs will be touching the underside of the table and be butted right up against the stretchers, the, the straighteners, stiffeners. Man, I can't talk today. So this will do two things. It gives a thicker place for those screws to screw into. You're gonna go in, you're gonna put the screws down. You're gonna go through both of these pieces. They're gonna go through the hinge and it makes it a lot sturdier of a connection. The other thing that it does is it, like I said, it makes the top of the table a lot stiffer. It's less likely to bow or bend out of the way. One of the reasons you wanna stick with the numbers that you've got, and if you look at these numbers, you'll find that two foot four and two foot four set in from the edge, they're gonna overlap. So for that, you're gonna use some of your scrap pieces as you go, and you're actually going to take, and you're going to put a strip of wood at the base on the top of these stiffeners that is that four inches there, maybe make it five, and raise it up on one side so that when you put your legs down one leg will go down first the other leg from the other side will then come down and it will sit on top and they won't butt into each other <laughs> i think i might have just messed that one up actually i'm thinking about a different table entirely on that one i haven't made this particular one in a little while um, so actually for this table, you, you can skip that step entirely. I totally forgot that was for one that I made it taller. And uh, so we'll go back for that. <laughs> Nothing like messing up on live television. So you don't need to have that or live internet anyway. You don't need to have that, the, uh, that riser that I was talking about. You'll have it in just in the stiffener. You'll have it just in here and it will be good to go where you attach it on there. Um, again, keeping in mind your screws, you need a, you want a longer screw to go into the bottom of the table, but the side, you're only doing one thickness of the leg. So depending on when you buy your hinges, sometimes they'll come with screws, sometimes you have them around, but you will only need about a half inch screw for the one, for the, the side that goes to the leg. Hopefully that doesn't confuse everyone too much like I just confused myself. I'm good at that on occasion. So once I've gotten the tabletop itself, before I go on to the legs, I will attach the two stiffeners on there. I'll glue them down, I'll clamp them up. I'll use a brad nailer to make sure that they're attached nice and tight. Now is also a time that if you are inclined to edge your table, now is a good time to do it. Uh, personally, when I do them, I tend to do go down the long side first and I will glue the strip in place and also uh, brad nail it into the plywood down the edges on both sides and then I'll sit let that sit and dry on its own for a bit and then when I'm done I'll come back and I will trim the ends of the table completely flush with those sides and then I will put the end board uh, on so that the end overlaps the side going all the way out. It's really just a matter of personal preference. You can do it either way. You can put the ends on first, trim it flush, then do the sides. But that gets the entirety of the table glued together and drying up as you're going. And you can now take that and move it aside. The plan that I've shared here right now is the original one that I got that originally came along the line. And the legs use this particular pattern here. And as you can see, it's, it's a pretty simple pattern. It's mostly square lines, it, it, straight lines. You've got some cutouts in here to give it a little bit of definition to take a little weight off. You've got a couple of feet on it. Um, the important part of this whole thing is this slot right here. This is where your, st your stretcher is gonna go for the table. This is what's gonna lock the whole thing together and keep it from shifting back and forth and give it some strength and also keep your legs from folding up on you. 
what you've got right now is you've got a couple of squares, a couple of big rectangles. So there's a couple of different things that you can do with this. If this is the way you want to go, you can do kind of here. This is a template that was cut out. The intent with this is I'm going to put a, uh, I'm going to use this as my template. I'm going to lay it out. And for me, we were using uh, routers, a tracing bit on a router. So I'd lay this out, I'd clamp it down, I would put a tracing bit on my router, I would trace the whole thing out, and the leg would be good, the leg would be done. Especially useful if you're planning on doing a number of the tables. If you're only doing one, it's kind of a toss up whether or not that is gonna save you a step, or if you're just as well, just laying it out, cutting it with a jigsaw and calling it good. It's, it's really kind of your, your personal preference or making your template, saving it for later if you wanna make another one, cutting around it, however you wanna go. Again, it's, it's entirely based on what tools you have and what you're comfortable with. The really important part of this uh, template here is actually going to be this section here, specifically that slot, because that is where that stretcher is going to go. You take your stretcher, you're going to take your rectangular stretcher, and you're going to glue some blocks on it, just like I've done here. On either end, you're going to end up with two blocks, and each block is going to be, I'm going to put it here, two and three eighths inch wide from the end. So you, when you glue those down, those are gonna be what keeps the legs out and stiff. When it goes in, it's gonna slide in just like this. It'll go all the way across. This one's a little out. It wasn't necessarily designed for this particular pattern. And you will have a second piece of wood, a second series of wood pieces glued up here, by which I mean, I'm gonna take two more, I'm gonna have them in here and I'm just gonna glue them together on either side. The space here is the thickness of your wood. So take one of your scraps, you're gonna put it here, you're gonna butt that piece up against it and that's where it's gonna go and you'll do the same with the other side. So that when you put this together, this has just got a narrow channel in here with a block that fits right down in that slot. Now, that being said, this piece here, that section of the table is only the only real super important part. You need to have an opening here that is big enough that you can get that piece in when it's glued to the bottom of the table and then slide down. And you need to have that slot that it's deep enough that this is gonna go in there and slide down far enough to be solid. It does not have to be the entire length of the, uh, of the stretcher. It can be a little bit shorter. I'd say go at least three quarters of the way. If you're looking here, you're looking at a six inch stretcher, I'd go no less than four inches deep. If you wanna go all six inches, go for it. There's no reason not to. Um, having it a little higher gives you a little bit more leg room in there kicking. If you are all the way down here, then it's just a hair shorter, but not enough that most people are gonna notice. The reason I bring that up is, at this point, we're looking at this gigantic slab of a leg here. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to lay this out. I'm going to decide how I want to do this. I don't know if you'll be able to see this or not. So you can see that, I hope. That is the only area that is pretty necessary. I would also put a couple of feet on here. You don't want a solid slab foot on the bottom. It makes it harder to find a place to put it. But that means that this whole additional area is a canvas for you to play with however you want your legs to look. You can uh, copy uh, the X style you know, pedestal legs I've seen in some places. You can do it as a uh, you know, slanted out a bit and kind of tracing and copying the look of a, um, a trestle table. It's really up to you to decide how you wanna do it. You can stick with this pattern. I've given you the layout for it there, but as you're going, you can put your own individual stamp on this. Uh, I found a, a depiction of an end table 
uh, or the end of a uh, table that had kind of a curve in the inside, bowed out a bit, had little like, you know, decorative doodads and baubles on there. And I copied that for one of my tables. Unfortunately, I don't have a picture of it. Um, but this is where you can really kind of put your stamp on it because the legs are what people are most likely to see. Yes, you'll have the top, but you're gonna have stuff on it. You might have a tablecloth on it. You're gonna have dishes. You're gonna have crafts. You're gonna have whatever you're working with at the time. And that doesn't really stand out. But when someone's walking up to your area, this is a point where they're gonna see that table leg and be able to kind of look at it and get an idea, you know, the, what's your aesthetic that you're trying to portray? Are you doing for a 14th century look? Are you going for a later than that? You're going for a little bit earlier. However, you want to decorate that to fit in with your own. This gives you plenty of place to play around with that and kind of design the look as you're going. Um, on my plan here, if you look at it, if you can pull that back up again. Unless I lost her. There we go. Can you zoom in on the side view of the table there? Lower in the middle. So that right there shows how the stretcher is going to go into place. It shows what the stretcher looks like. And you can see there's kind of the point right there. The way these tables were actually set up when I was doing it is those points uh, are cut out of all of the scrap that comes off of your table, uh, your table legs. And I mimic that point into the underside of the uh, or the top portion of the leg where that notch is so that when you put the whole table together, you can actually lay your stretcher down in between the legs, flat to the top of the table, and then the legs will be on top of it. And that point will keep it locked in place. So I can shut it down. So what I mean by that, is I've got my tabletop. Let me see if I can get this to cooperate with me a little bit here. Hopefully you can see that. So I've got my tabletop, my stringer, my stretcher is in the middle. I've got my stiffeners on either side of it. These are, the, the stiffeners are one thickness. So that is a, a half inch up, the half inch of the uh, block for the, uh, the stringer keeps it raised. Then I've got that half, then I've got there. So that piece when it goes down is gonna sit right here. So that if you've got that point cut out, that point will be sitting here, it will come down and it will lock into this cutout right there. What that does for you is when you take your table down, you just leave your stretcher in there, you fold your legs down, and if you staple a couple of pieces of Velcro, or not Velcro, sorry, elastic to the underside of the table, you can slip that over your feet and then you can pick your tabletop up and walk off with it with all of your pieces connected. It is not a really complicated project. Um, as you can see, most of it is cutting some straight lines, doing some decorative cuts as we go there, and just doing a lot of waiting for the gluing. Once you get it together, it, it's pretty lightweight. It's not much more than what your basic sheet of plywood is weighing when you get it. You can thicken it up. You can use heavier plywood. You can also uh, change the dimensions a bit as I kind of mentioned earlier, uh, I had somebody that wanted a couple of these chairs, but being taller individuals, they needed the legs longer. Um, the problem with that is, as I said, the legs needed to be longer. So now instead of butting up against each other, they were overlapping. And that's when I was, you had to put that, uh, that riser in it to get the height a little bit higher. So that instead of kind of sitting like this and sticking up in the air, it was flat and sat on top of it. Hopefully that makes sense. That is pretty much this table in a nutshell. It is not a really difficult pro uh, project. It is something that's gonna go together. It 
you can knock out a bunch of them in an afternoon or you can knock out just the one. Ooh, I just turned everything a little kitty corner there. Um, the first time we made them, we had people get together and I believe we've made six or seven of them in a single afternoon. If you've got a few people together, you can streamline the production uh, and have somebody starting to cut out the, the basic pieces as you're going, somebody doing a little bit of sanding, somebody else, if you're making a template, can cut out all of the leg pieces, somebody else to assembling it. And you can go from there, especially if you're using like a brad nailer or if you're gonna go ahead and use screws to screw the, the stiffeners to the tabletop, um, you know, you can, you can work with it and get it to a point where it is a finished and complete table, just waiting for all the glue to finally dry and then come back the next day and put the finish of your choice on it. Do we have any questions? Sorry, I'm having trouble remembering where I'm supposed to <laughs> control things for some reason. It's because apparently I've not done this very long. Um, so I don't see any questions. If anybody has any questions, go ahead and type them in the chat. <clears throat> um, he would have had a table to show you today, but it is pouring down rain here and they are unfortunately in our trailer. <laughs> so in the very back. So we would have had to pull everything out in the soaking wet rain. So um, we will have a link for the handout. So the handout, th that's the question I just got is do you have a link for the handout? Um, the handout will be available. I will post it on the Facebook event. Um, I'll also post it. Um, I'll add it to the, um, the blog post that will go with the recording of this class so that um, you can access all of it there. Do you have any other questions? And I believe there was, uh, with the actual class description that was posted on YouTube, there were pictures of a, a stack of the tables. And uh, those were the ones that we made um, when we put it all together and did the, the weekend that I mentioned and came out in a single day. So that gives you kind of an idea of what you're looking at. I can share some of the pictures here. So this is yeah. uh, this is some of them here, and you can kind of see mm -hmm. the uh, the little oh, triangles good. there. Mm -hmm. What were you saying? I'm sorry. No, no, I was about to say the same thing. Close enough. Um, and then if it'll, it's not dropping away from me. Okay. There we go. Okay, and there's the picture that you were talking about of the yeah. when we all got crazy and creative. Tables. Yeah, and that was the first time I had made these tables, and there were about a dozen of us. And like I said, we we put together six of them in uh, in a weekend. Right. Um, so they they can go together pretty quick. Again, they're not the most period looking thing in the world. They're not great for historical accuracy, but they are a great way to you know, get yourself a table, get it out there, get something that's not going to be so glaringly, you know, mundane and out of place for you. I thought I saw another question pop up. There is. Um, do you have a particular finish you prefer, particularly for tables designed for outdoor use? So all of my tables are outdoor use. Um, I have stained most of them with uh, min wax, just regular wood stain and finish. The problem I found with that is it does not really it's a surface stain. It does stain. It provides a certain amount of protection, but not a lot. And they get beaten. They get scuffed a lot. What I tend to go for on most of my finishes, I, there's a couple of things I do. I use Tight Bond 3, which is actually this stuff right here. It is a, an exterior usage water, uh, or exterior usage glue. Man, that rain is really coming down. It is a waterproof glue. So it's not going to get wet and your table's not going to fall apart in an event. And I then, just muted so that we weren't also getting the rain sound from in here because we're hitting the, the chimney in here and it gets louder. So. And then I use, um, and I'll show you what I use actually. If I'm not looking to get a specific color, I actually use a uh, use Helmsman, which is another Minwax product. It's a spar urethane, it's an indoor outdoor, and they boast that it protects from sunlight, rain, moisture, and temperature change. It's a green can, you can get it at Lowe's. They do not carry it at Home Depot anymore. Um, just about any of the exterior spar urethanes that are gonna have UV protectant are nice. They keep your wood from changing color as quickly. 
if you wanted a different color than the actual plywood um, that it is, there are a number of different stains out there that you can get. And you can stain and then put a polyurethane over the top of that, and that'll give it a little bit more protection. Um, Ours also sits underneath the tent all the time. It's not really out in direct sunlight. It's not out in the actual rain, but there are a few things to really kind of keep, uh, keep an eye on. Um, I band the edges of the table. I don't do anything for the feet. If you really want to make it last a while for the bottom of the feet here, I would put a strip of a hardwood or something on it. Um, or at the very least, make sure that you put a good solid double or maybe even triple coat with polyurethane on it, because this is where you're going to wick up most of your moisture from. It's going to get into that plywood and it's going to cause the plywood, the feet of the plywood legs to, to delaminate. And then, well, if you don't have legs on your table, it, it really doesn't do a whole lot of good. Do you have any others? Do you have any other questions? That was it. Oh, getting, getting a, with pine cones. I know, we're getting a lot of wind and uh, yeah, pine cones hitting the windows and roof right now. <laughs> so this was, like I said, a pretty easy project. It's not, uh, I mean, it's, it's a nice jump off as well for somebody who's looking to maybe build something a little bit bigger and a little intimidated by something else. And it is easily transported and useful for more than just, well, it goes in my camp gear, but I can't use it for anything else. I've seen people that have used these, they bring them inside and they use them for craft tables. You know, they're also nice because, well, I don't want to drill into my plastic table that I bought or my metal one, but my plywood table, you know, yeah, I'll, I'll bolt something to that without a problem. I can replace it. I can refinish it. So it's a good working table for, for getting you out there and kind of getting you started on things. Or just in general, we, I mean, we have these, we've used them for ever and um you know i mean we use them for the for the kitchen space and we use them for the eating space and you know pretty much whatever we need we've used them for sales and stuff and i mean they they work really nicely right so um for for people starting out or for people who just need more <laughs> is that pine cones for people who just need more um more places to put things in their camp <laughs> Are you getting yeah. distracted by pine cones pelting the roof? <laughs> uh, a little bit, wondering, you know, if we're going to have like power or internet outage here in the near future, you know, not too usual for us, but possible. And the good, there was good timing for the class then. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, like I said, this was a short one. I hope everybody got something from it. And uh, thanks again for showing up and letting me uh, babble at you for an hour or so. And uh, I, I would encourage anyone, if you have any additional questions or if you'd just like to share what you're making or suggestions for different classes down the road, uh, please reach out, let me know. I'd love to hear from you. I like to see what other people are making. And you can find him through, um, through my Facebook uh, artist page, which is Early Sweden, DC Ibrika Lundi, Early Sweden, or his Facebook page, which is AMR Woodcraft. So thank you thank so you much for teaching. Not a problem. I think the next one we're looking at, we're probably going to be looking at the Leopold bench. <laughs>